Hey, warm well, welcome to this talk, Saturday the 14th of September. Now, in the United States, there seems to be a deal of state autonomy that we don't uh, enjoy uh, in the United Kingdom. And I just want to start off with some advice from the Florida Health Department, which I think you'll find interesting. Based on the high rates of global immunity, which we know we have, natural immunity, I would stress, is the majority of that type of immunity, uh, and currently available data, the State Surgeon General advises against the use of mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. So pretty uh, clear advice there from the Surgeon General of Florida. But does he offer any advice instead? Well, yes, he does. Let's go in and look at that. And this is remarkably refreshing. What we haven't had from all our pontificating politicians in the United Kingdom, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, apart from maybe one or two uh, exceptions. Um, staying physically active. That's a good idea. Normally, most people stay physically active. Unless you've got a medical condition, consult your doctor first. Minimising processed foods. Yeah, <laughs> minimise processed foods, absolutely. We've looked recently how this composes... 60% of the uh, calorie intake in the United States. And of course, if you're minimising processed foods, you're going to be hungry, so you eat natural foods, fruit and vegetables, preferably without pesticides and insecticides, as far as uh, possible. Natural foods. If it looks like a food, it's probably a food, or more likely to be a food. If it comes in a packet, it doesn't really look like a food. Maybe it's not a food. Maybe it's an industrially produced uh, product. Uh, oh, there we go. Prioritising vegetables and healthy fats. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This is motherhood and apple pie. This, isn't it? Spending time outdoors to support the necessary vitamin D levels. Now, I agree here uh, to a point. But um, as you get older, uh, the skin is able to produce less vitamin D in the sunshine, sunshine. So even in Florida, where it's remarkably sunny, of course, and if you've got a small surface area of the body exposed, you might not make enough. So even if you live in Florida, uh, do consider getting your vitamin D levels checked. And of course, <laughs> anywhere north of Florida, I kind of think that goes without uh, saying. So interesting, 22 million people or so, I think, in Florida, last time I checked, getting interesting, independent advice. And it is on this website here. Uh, this is from the uh, Florida Department of Health. So that's what this is about. Let's unpick this in a little more detail now. Uh, 12th of September, so it's recent guidelines, uh, updated guidelines for COVID-19 booster vaccines, fall and winter. The Florida Department of Health is reminding healthcare providers of the importance of remaining up to date with current literature. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All healthcare providers should be up to date with current literature absolutely nothing to disagree with here we emphatically support this uh, contention put forward by the florida department of health and the importance of providing patients with informed consent absolutely and we've whinged about the lack of informed consent in my personal case for example um, in the past and uh, for many of you out there as well of course uh, the lamentable failure uh, of uh, informed consent in some areas. Right, the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, approved and authorised updated versions of the mRNA vaccine from Pfizer, uh, Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna. The FDA approved the vaccine for people 12 and older and provided emergency use authorization for children 6 months to 11 years. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's right, the FDA is advising or saying it's allowed at least, to vaccinate seven-month-old children against COVID. Now, this was so incredible in my view. I checked it on the original site, so I went to this site here, uh, which is the uh, FDA approves and authorised uh, site for the mRNA COVID vaccines. And um, incredibly, I found that the report from Florida is accurate. Uh, let's just look at the relevant section. This is from the FDA. Unvaccinated individuals six months through to four years of age are eligible to receive three doses of the updated authorised Pfizer vaccine. Two of two doses of the updated authorised Moderna vaccines. Basically, unvaccinated individuals 
six months, so seven month old children eligible to receive mRNA COVID vaccines, according to the FDA. Quite incredible. But that is from that site there. Right, let's carry on. Uh, this is back to Florida now. <clears throat> the stated target of these boosters is the Omicron variant, which is not causing a significant number of infections. Now, they are making these claims and they are referenced. You must decide what you make of these references. I have looked at them, of course. Um, so here is that one that they're taking that claim from. And uh, these are all available. I've included all the links, uh, of course. That one's from the Johns Hopkins uh, site, uh, which we've used uh, quite a lot over the uh, last few years. Now, um, the most recent booster approval was granted in the absence of booster-specific clinical trials. So absence of booster-specific clinical trials, uh, anyway, th that was performed in humans. I think they did it on a few mice, didn't they? Uh, furthermore, the booster does not protect against the currently dominant strain, accounting for approximately 37% of infections in the United States. Florida uh, reference uh, again. So going back to Florida, let's just look at the site there that they're giving evidence for that from the giving evidence from that site there, which of course is the CDC's own site. So uh, it's actually quite a tidy piece of academia that the Florida Department of Health have put out here. Well evidence-based, which of course is exactly what we like to see on this channel. There are currently limited data to inform whether these boosters offer any substantial protection against the virus and subsequent circulating variants. And uh, here is their reference for that. Um, very well referenced. This is from the CDC site. So again, the evidence uh, is provided by the Florida Department of Health. Uh, although randomised clinical trials are normally used to approve therapeutics, the federal government has not, not required COVID-19 vaccine manufacturers to demonstrate their booster Boosters prevent hospitalisation or death from COVID-19 illness. An interesting change of tack here, of course. We originally, uh, the original data on these vaccines was preventing infection. That, that one's been kind of um, not mentioned as much lately. <laughs> and uh, But there's no evidence even here. They're saying, according to the Florida Department of Health, it's preventing hospitalisations or deaths, no trial data, which is uh, disappointing, of course. Additionally, the federal yeah, failed to provide significant data to support that or acknowledge previously demonstrated safety concerns with COVID-19 vaccine boosters, including prolonged circulation of mRNA spike protein and in some vaccine recipients, increased risk of lower respiratory tract infection. <laughs> so in some people, you give the vaccine and you get an increased risk of lower respiratory tract infection. Increased risk of autoimmune disease after vaccination. Healthcare providers are encouraged to share information in this guidance in discussion with patients regarding mRNA COVID-19 vaccine boosters. Right, put your hands up if you don't agree with sharing information with, your, uh, with patients. I don't think many hands have gone up. And that was their uh, conclusions, as we've said. Based on the high rate of global immunity and current available data, the state Surgeon General advises against the use of mRNA COVID vaccines in the state of uh, Florida, at least. Uh, any uh, provider concerned about health risks associated with COVID-19 for patients over the age of 65 or with underlying health concerns, health conditions, should prioritise patient access to none mRNA COVID vaccines and treatment. Alternatives to mRNA technology. Safety and effective uh, efficacy concerns from Florida now. Um, providers and patients should be aware of outstanding mRNA COVID-19 vaccine safety and efficacy concerns. The mRNA COVID vaccines present a risk of subclinical and clinical myocarditis and other cardiovascular conditions in otherwise healthy individuals. <coughs> and again, of course, this is a reference. Let's look at a couple of those now. They reference this paper here and they reference this paper here. 
So again, plenty of references from the Florida Department of Health, which is always good to see. And the links are available in the paper. I've left the hyperlinks in, but just put in some of these links for your convenience. Um, the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines may be associated with increased risk of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which we've looked at in the past, the so-called POTS. Uh, and uh, I think they give a link uh, for that yet yeah, there's the specific evidence for that there from nature cardiovascular research very encouraging that all the references are given here because so often in especially in mainstream media they're not given they don't give the references it's really annoying uh, we need to know why we are being told what we are told with the evidence um, as far as the evidence has allowed to be gathered of course it has limitations. The mRNA COVID vaccines may be associated with increased risk of autoimmune disease, including systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and psoriasis. So SLE can affect pretty well any part of the body. Rheumatoid arthritis can affect different parts of the body, not only the joints, but largely the joints. Psoriasis, of course, is a skin condition. And again, are they giving references for this? Yes, they are. There we see it there. Long-term risk of autoimmune disease after mRNA-based SARS coronavirus 2 vaccine in a Korean nationwide population-based cohort study. Pity a lot of these studies are done in the Far East rather than in the US of A or the, uh, uh, what's our kingdom called? United, that was it, United Kingdom. Um, pity we're not doing more research in that. Throughout the pandemic, studies across geographical regions have found that the mRNA COVID vaccines are associated with negative effectiveness after four to six months. Uh, as efficacy waned, studies showed that COVID-19 vaccinated individuals developed an increased risk <laughs> for infection. Um, I, I thought it was supposed to reduce the risk of infection, but you know, there you go. We live and learn. Let's look at the reference for that. Uh, here we have that one. Efficacy of the, co the uh, coronavirus disease 19 bivalent vaccines from that reference uh, there. And uh, this is quite an interesting one. Um, I've got just a quote from this paper. I think I'm pretty sure that's that paper there. Um, the, asso the association of increased risk with COVID-19 with more prior vaccine doses was unexpected. So they found that there was more COVID-19 with people that had more vaccines. There's something I'm not getting here. You're giving vaccines and people are getting more COVID-19 according to this research and with all the adverse effects. Let's hope someone's benefiting from it. I suspect it keeps the wheels of commerce turning, doesn't it? Which is uh, an observation. Elevated levels of mRNA and spike protein from mRNA COVID-19 vaccines persist, persist among some individuals for an indefinite period, which may carry health risks. Well, again, hands up if you would like elevated levels of mRNA spike protein in your blood. I don't think any hands went up there. And again, let's look at the reference for that. Is uh, actually that one was a PDF. I'm not sure I've got that, but uh, there is this one here: detection of recombinant spike protein in the blood of individuals vaccinated against SARS coronavirus to possible molecular mechanisms. Pity there's not more funding available for this type of research. Can't think why there wouldn't be. Um. Right, so some references there on that. Still, this is still the Florida Department of Health. Potential inter DNA integration from the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines pose unique and elevated risk to human health to the integrity of the human genome. I would like the human genome to remain as it is. Thank you very much. Including the risk that DNA integrated into sperm or egg gametes could be passed on to offspring of mRNA COVID-19 vaccine recipients. This is not me speaking. This is directly from the Florida Department of Health. 
so refreshing to get some counter argument. Pity we don't see this from more authorities in pretty well every other country that we could think of. There is an unknown risk of potential impacts uh, with each additional dose of the mRNA COVID vaccine. Currently, individuals may have received five to seven doses and counting of this vaccine over a three-year period. So effective, you need seven doses. Okay. Uh, improving habits and overall health help um, the, uh, the reduced risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes. So, so basically what they're saying here, there should be a gap there, that's why I can't read that. Uh, improved habits and overall health help manage and reduce the risk of heart disease. So what they're saying is COVID-19 infection, to the extent which it is still a risk, is a risk to those with comorbidities. So reduce your comorbidities, obviously. <laughs> um, so reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, obesity, risk factors for serious illness for COVID. The State Surgeon General Department uh, the State Surgeon General and the Department continue to encourage Flor Floridians to prioritise their overall health. And these are the points we mentioned at the start. Staying physically active, minimising processed food, prioritising vegetables and healthy fats, spending time outdoor to the necessary levels of vitamin D. And I would add, get your vitamin D levels checked and if necessary, take supplements. Um, not much money to be made from general health advice, but I would support these ideas very much so so free thinking in florida let me know what you think ludicrous propaganda from florida let me know what you think but a counter argument is certainly a good thing pity it's not allowed as often as we would like pity it's not allowed uh, in as many subject areas as we would like. And on a completely separate matter, you probably noticed the pictures in the background. There's one there as well. A gentleman who probably needs a uh, little introduction. George Orwell, of course. But for now, thank you for watching.